you're new around here, my name is Katie, and I'm so happy that you're here. So today we're gonna to be DIYing my Pinterest board, my home decor pins. So first of all, I love Pinterest. I am always pinning things. Um, at night when I'm just like relaxing, I love to go on Pinterest and just browse around and find new home decor items. So I thought it would be fun to pick a few of those out, some of my favorites, and see if I can recreate them. Some of these turned out to be easier than others. I kind of struggled here and there, but I wanna share that with you guys and show you my tips and tricks for how maybe you can do it better but all in all, I think all of them turned out really cute and totally Pinterest worthy. So the first thing that I wanted to try out was actually a set of coasters that I saw on Pinterest and they're a rattan material, but my goal is always to give you guys ways to DIY things with materials that anybody can find at their local craft store, not have to go out and buy any fancy special materials. So I decided to try to recreate this using items that were easy to find. And I have to say, I decided not to turn this into a coaster because I have so many coasters in my house. I've done tons of coaster DIYs, but I decided to make it a little candle holder but you can certainly make them coasters if you want to. For the bottom of this I'm using this shelf liner that I had and then I'm also using some macrame cord. So I started by twisting the macrame cord around itself a few times just to get this going and you'll see it starts to you know create this spiral pattern. Then I picked that up and I added a little bit of glue to the shelf liner and then I glued that started spiral down. Now you can add a little bit of glue to the cord itself and wrap it around itself again. And then you can start gluing right down onto the shelf liner or whatever base you're using and then continue gluing so that your rope or whatever you use is going to be glued right down to your base. Now at this point I realized I was probably gluing it to my table so I added another layer and that worked out well. And then I made it about the size of a coaster and I cut off the excess cord and then I just roughly cut out the shelf liner and then I went back in and sort of trimmed it up so that you couldn't see too much of it when you flipped it over on the other side. I probably could have trimmed it even more and I might go back and do that a little bit later. So now you have something that looks like this and then I picked up these little craft matchsticks at the craft store and I started to glue them one by one starting in the middle of the little circle shape that I made and then I didn't exactly measure these out, I just tried to eyeball it and make sure they were all evenly spaced. Then I went in with my scissors and I just cut off right at the edge of the rope and it was really easy to cut. I also went back in and cut out the middle of the rope because I wanted there to be an empty space there. Now what I did was take some wire and I lifted up one of the little matchsticks, put some glue underneath, and then I glued the end of the wire right underneath it. And I kind of created like a little L shape with the wire so that it would stay in place. Once it was totally dry, I started to string on a few beads and I believe I used eight beads. Then I bent the wire and I went over two more matchsticks. So I'm doing this for every three matchsticks. So then I made another little bend in the wire so I would know where to glue it down. And then I used my scissors because this wire is pretty thin to just cut that right there. Next, I bent the wire in a little L shape again, and I glued it under the little matchstick that was two away from the first one, and I let that dry. You'll have some excess wire here, so you can just take some wire cutters and cut as close as you can to the beads, and then just repeat this process, making a little L shape with your wire, gluing it under a matchstick, stringing on your beads, and then gluing it a couple matchsticks over. This was pretty simple. I would say it was a little bit tedious, but nothing too crazy, and I love the way it turned out. chandeliers which I thought were so pretty they are sold in tons of stores and they're really expensive and so I thought maybe I could create one of my own what I ended up having was not so much a chandelier but more of just a decorative hanging um, I didn't put a light in it or anything like that and I really didn't have the patience to make like a huge chandelier but again I love how this one turned out to make this, you'll need two hoops, one larger one and one smaller one. I'm using the inside of an embroidery hoop and then just this little metal hoop here. So you'll want to attach them together and I tested this out just to make sure I knew what I was doing, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. 
So I took a piece of string and I folded it in half. Then I slid it under the larger hoop and looped the ends through and pulled it tight. Next, I took a bit of tape, wrapped it around the bottom of the string just to make it easy to work with, and I strung a yarn needle on and used that to put the beads onto the string. And I did a pattern of 11 beads of varying sizes. Next, I cut the string and then I just tied it right around the metal hoop in a double knot. And that is this whole process for this entire project. As you can see, now they're going to be connected. So what I decided to do was actually lay out all of the strings that I would need so that I could make sure I was evenly spacing them all. And then I just went back in and put the beads on one by one. So you can start to do some across from each other and you'll see the shapes sort of start to come together. So like I said, I just continued stringing on 11 beads to each piece of string and then tying it to that little hoop. Once it was all done, I flipped it over and then I actually tied another knot because I wanted to make sure that it was not going to go anywhere and I snipped off the ends. To cover up the little metal ring because it was kind of messy looking, I had this extra trim so I added a bit of hot glue to it and just glued it right around the edge of that metal ring just to make it look a little more clean. Then to hang it up, I took some more string, looped it around that larger hoop and did that in four different spots. Then I gathered them all together and created a loop at the top just by tying a knot and then you're set to hang it up. And lastly, I'd seen a few of these around there, these really cool plant hangers that can be made with tons of different materials. This one was probably the one I struggled with the most, but I'll show you what I did. For this one, you'll need two large metal rings and one smaller one. For this one, I decided to use this acrylic paint because I like the color, but in hindsight, I should have spray painted it because the paint did chip a few times and I kept having to patch it up. But you can go ahead and just paint your hoops any color you want, or you can keep them metallic if you'd like to. Once they're totally dry, then you wanna line up one of the bigger rings with the smaller ring and then just add a bit of hot glue and then take some sort of string or I'm using this macrame cord and start to wrap them together so that they're joined. Like I said, this was a little bit of a struggle for me because I kept chipping the paint and I was getting really frustrated, but I got it in the end and I just wrapped it around a few times and then added a bit more glue and then cut off the rest of the string. Then I did this with the other big hoop as well. And just again, <laughs> I was struggling, but I got it done, um, wrapped the cord around a few times and then glued it down and cut off the excess. The last step is to gather up the two larger rings at the top and wrap some cord around there as well to keep them together. Then you can just add in a little pot, a little planter, and you can hang it up. 